Oops. And I am a cellist, and I've actually traveled overseas with my cello um, in a flight case, but also in a, a regular hard case. So I've got some tips for you guys, all of you guys actually, for packing your instruments, even the violins and violas, <coughs> which will most likely go on the overhead compartment. You still want to have some extra cushion, and I have some really practical tips that'll save you from spending a fortune and save your instrument from damage. God no. So, um, we've got two cellos up here, which is great. If you wouldn't mind whoever's cellos they are, if you wouldn't mind opening up your cases. And these are the same techniques you can use on your violins and violas, okay? Um, that really do come in handy. And they're just simple little things, um, which actually end up saving you some suitcase space as well. So, I'm gonna just turn this guy this way. Oh, you got party cover, so you're straight. Yeah. You'll be fine. But there are still some things that we want to do. What is this? Are you so far? Yeah. Nice. Um, I have a Quintus carbon fiber. They don't make them anymore, but I still I really love them. Yeah. Anybody else have carbon fiber? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> carbon fiber bows are good. Well, I was actually just talking about bows. Is anyone here, does anyone know if they have any ivory on a bow? <laughs> There's a band now, so yes. I don't know about that. That could be an issue. Why, why? Yeah, they'll take it right from you. Yes, why, they why? will. And I actually spoke with a, another cellist friend why? of mine who I had a student that happened to. So if possible, you may want to try to get a hold of a different bow to use for this trip specifically. Um, carbon fiber bows are very sturdy, and there's, some, there's a broad range. There's some that are really, really expensive. There are some that are not so expensive. Um, and the middle range ones actually sound pretty good and feel good and they travel very well. So that may be something you want to look into if you have an ivory tip or even more so an ivory frog, okay? It doesn't mean throw away your bow, it's just you want to be careful and you don't want any heartbreaking scenes if they take it from you, so that's one thing to watch for. Now, with a hard case, and I'll talk about the soft case in a minute. With a hard case, that's gonna be a little bit more protective period, and I'm sure that most of the violins and violas in the room um, have hard cases. As the instruments get bigger, the cases get more expensive. So sometimes, you know, it's wonderful that you have this. Um, it's wonderful if you have a flight case, but if you don't, um, there are some things you can do to help. Now, just starting with the body of the instrument, okay? Now, the carbon fiber, you don't have to worry so much because it's, that thing's waterproof, it's scratch resistant, you know, all of that stuff. But it's still not a bad idea to do this. They sell cello sheets that you can buy. And they run anywhere from $50 to $75. You know, they're silk, you can get your letters on them. But I have a much less expensive alternative. Bed pillowcase sheets. You can go to Walmart, Kmart, whoever, Mart, and get a couple of king-size bed sheets. Or, you know, just the suitcases, not the whole sheet, just the suitcase, uh, pillowcases, excuse me. And what you do, if you don't mind, um, <coughs> And as the smaller the instrument, the smaller the size. For cellos, you want the king size, okay? Because they're longer and they're a little broader. And you just put one right over at the top and put the second one right underneath. And what that does is it protects against scratches, um, little impact dings, you know, just something to protect the finish and the gorgeous look of your instrument. You can do the same thing with your violins and violas, but you'll only need one uh, pillowcase um, to cover the whole kit and caboodle. So that's a really inexpensive alternative to buying an instrument sheath, unless you just want to be fancy. So that's the first step. The other thing that I always do, because it's very cost effective and it's very protective, I use some of my clothes to cushion my instrument. I'll get there in a second. The first step, you want to loosen your strings. Not so that they're flaccid, we still want a little tension to make sure it's holding up your sound post and your bridge. Now for the guys taking it on the overhead compartment, the violins and violas, you're not going to need to do that. The cabin is pressurized for humans, so we're okay, the violins and violas are okay. Really that's more of a thing for under uh, the plane, because that is not pressurized for human safety. If it's not safe for the human, it's not safe for your instrument. So, we loosen the strings at least two pole steps. 
Okay, that's safe. You're still going to keep your bridge up. Your sound post most likely will not fall, but it releases enough tension so that nothing caves in the face. This guy is not, you know, no. but your bridge could pop. Yeah. It could break in half. So definitely two steps lower, okay, for underneath <clears throat> the plane. From that point, that's where we start packing. Now you see here, there's a well right up where the headstock is. One of the things that I always do is use socks, believe it or not. If you, you know, you put the two pair, to, you know, two socks together, and you do that foldy thing. You guys know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You guys do your own laundry, right? You don't make your moms do it all, do you? Okay. So you put them in pairs, and then you just gently pack around the headstock with socks and or soft t-shirts. Now with the t-shirts, I don't recommend that you use something that has a lot of applique or any sort of like dazzle dots or any of that stuff. <laughs> Just very plain, simple t-shirts. They're very soft. If you do have some sort of design like your shirt, the emotions of Chuck Norris, <laughs> <laughs> just turn it inside out <laughs> and then you fold it so that all of the design is on the inside of the shirt. And you just gently pack right around here until it's firm, not so that it's pressing on anything. We're just creating cushion, okay? Same thing with this little part up here, if you can see. We've got some space. Pretty much wherever there's space, we're, we want to put a little cushion, okay? So you could do the same type of thing. T-shirts, underwear, socks, anything soft and relatively small. And you just roll them and put them right in here. Same thing with here on the side belts and at the bottom. And that gives it cushion as well. Now, the end pins, depending on your case, um, not applicable to violins and violas, but for cellists, the end pin tends to be extremely sharp. I don't recommend putting anything in the end pin well <coughs> that you're concerned with possibly getting ripped or destroyed, because that can happen. So you have like that old pair of gym socks that your mom doesn't want you to wear. Those are perfect for right under the end pin because there's a good chance that they'll get scratched, torn, uh, you know, those little threads will end up sticking out because these guys are pretty sharp. But the rest of the case, you can use those small items of clothes just to keep it really sturdy. Now, using the clothes, we'll get to the foam in a second, but using clothes, again, same soft articles, undergarments, right up next to the bridge on both sides and totally under your fingerboard. Believe it or not, I mean, the fingerboard is on pretty, pretty sturdy. However, too much pressure can make that fall or sometimes the glue can come loose. And this is for cellos, violins, and violas. Putting a little something under here, even if it's in the overhead, <coughs> is a great idea. And especially making sure to secure your bridge. It's not that if the bridge falls, the world is gonna end, it won't. But it's one less thing to worry about. So if you really uh, make sure that this is packed well, all the way up to your strings, and then under your fingerboard, as well as, down here, up to the finger, uh, to the bridge, all the way to the top, and pack all the way under the end piece. That's going to give it a lot of support, gentle support, because that's the thing we want to remember: gentle. We want to treat these instruments like they're little tiny toddlers that need a lot of assistance. Okay, so we want to make sure that at all times your instrument is comfortable. If something would be too tight on you, it's going to be too tight in your case. So. We just want to gently pack so that it's touching, but not too firm, okay? So that's how to work it, or I guess what they call life hack. I'm old, so I'm just getting used to these <laughs> terms. But that's a great life hack for packing your instrument without spending a whole lot of cash. And it ends up saving you some space in your suitcase, which is also, you know, good. Now, using the foam, and we have some foam over here. I'm not gonna cut it right now, but you want to take those pieces of foam if you don't have a lot of undergarments to pack. And just, you're going to cut small pieces, not huge. We don't need it to just line the instrument in one solid piece. We're not getting artistic with this. You want to cut the piece so that it makes sense for your case and your instrument and what it needs. So obviously the headstock is a delicate spot. So you want to make sure that this part 
is well secured, and you would cut a piece of foam about an inch smaller than the headstock, okay? And when I say that, what I mean is, I'm just gonna raise this up for a second, so that it goes vertically from here to here, okay? And a second piece can go underneath that since it tends to curve, like this case does. I'm oh, sorry, set that over. Um, another smaller piece, about an inch shorter than the width to make a cross. What that does is it gives a lot of support to this part because we don't want this part to get knocked too hard. Not just because of the pegs, um, but because if this takes too hard a hit, we can hit one of these situations, which we don't want. So giving that some extra support is really, really helpful. Okay, And this is where the pillowcases come in as well. If you're using foam inserts, usually there is not an issue. Under the plane tends to be very cold. However, if your instruments are stuck on the tarmac for a while, it may be very warm. And we don't want any of the foam sticking to your instrument's uh, finish. So using those pillowcases really helps protect the finish of your instrument, which does matter, you know. And we're talking about preventing big issues, but we also want to protect the look and the feel of your instrument. And that's where those pillowcases can come in very nicely. It'll keep any of this foam from leaving any remnants on the body of your instrument, okay? Now the other thing is the bows. <laughs> now this case is beautiful. It has wonderful, secure bow holders. One thing, and I know this is gonna sound crazy, it's another hack, duct tape. <laughs> duct tape is my friend. Duct tape will save the day. Not on your bow, okay? <laughs> but right here, you see these flaps? Most cases do have the little flaps. I know violins and violas, you tend to have those little buds that turn. Well, we can use the duct tape for both. For the cello cases, to make sure that the bow stays, because sometimes Velcro starts to go. You know, you use it enough times, it catches lint, and it doesn't hold like it did at first. You want to take a nice big piece of duct tape and tape from about here across the fabric only, not the bow, down in here, okay? What that's gonna do is prevent this from flopping open. One of the things, and this happened to me, my bow came loose, scratched my cello right up here. And, you know, it didn't ruin my instrument, but, you know, I had to have that taken care of. Do you have a question, Marcy? Um, yeah, tape might work better because it doesn't leave any residue. And it's used for plays a lot at school. Which kind of tape? Gaff tape. Gaff tape? Oh, okay. That's ridiculous <laughs> expensive, my friend said. Yeah, that is. Oh. Well, if you want the cheap alternative, duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but gaff tape, boy, I would never have thought of that. That makes sense. It holds up to it. Yeah, and, um, and the best thing is my friend and my other friend have a big gaff tape ball that we use at the that because the tape on every place. It's funny. You don't shoot baskets with fruit or anything, do you? Okay, good. <laughs> but that's a great idea, gaff tape. I would never have thought of that. Thank you. So you want a strong tape. Like Marcy was saying, gaff tape, duct tape, not scotch tape, it's just not gonna do it, okay? Um, but the primary reason you don't want it on your bow, you don't want it to touch the hair, it will pull the hair out, mm. okay? So make sure it's only on the fabric, even if you need to cut it. If you have a broad piece, you can always cut it in half, okay? Don't let it touch the hair. And I don't recommend that you let that touch the winding. Some folks, bless you, some folks have silver, um, some have the whalebone, I mean, it depends. But it can loosen <clears throat> your winding, especially if it gets warm and the adhesive gets gooey, it's gonna get stuck in there and we don't want that. So make sure that it's not touching the bow, stick, or the hair, just the fabric sheath. Now for the violins and violas, you can still use the duct tape, but you'll need duct tape and scissors, or gaff tape. On the part that turns, you get it so it's horizontal and secures the bow, but then you take a, a little piece, not huge, of uh, the tape, and you put one on one side of the little twisty knobby thing. I'm sure there's a technical term, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> and then another one on the other side. And it's really just to secure that little knob from going vertical and letting your bow fly, okay? Because that, that can damage your instrument if the bow comes loose. So little things like that can prevent a lot of tears later, you know, because we do think of these as our babies. So. Um, that's one thing you want to do with the bow. Now at the end, you see right here, this is pretty well secured. As long as it's not frayed, there's no loose 
um, threads, this should be fine on this end. It's really that end that causes the issue. That's the heaviest end of the bow. It can, you know, come out the easiest and the biggest. So that's what I recommend for the bow, okay? Um, and one thing we can do, I should have brought some socks with me. I didn't want to put you guys through all that. I don't have any new ones. <laughs> so um, we have a secondary issue, a soft case for the cello. Um, whose cello is this one? Yours? Mm -hmm. Do you have a hard case? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Having a soft case on the outside is fine. You know, like BAM makes a, a travel case that's got a hard shell and then this huge, like, snowsuit thing that goes over it. <laughs> but typically, we don't want to use a hard case because, or a soft case, excuse me. It just doesn't protect enough under a plane or while, you know, the folks loading up the planes or, you know. We want to assume the worst. <laughs> Your instruments are going to get there fine and they're going to get back okay. But we want to plan for some of the more yucky situations that can arise, okay? So we want to avoid soft cases. Only if you have a hard case that goes inside a soft case, but no soft cases under the plane, okay? Especially because of the pressure issue. Um, if you have any little tidbits, like jealous have all kinds of extras. <laughs> we keep our rosin in there, we keep our belt or our rock stops. Violinists, you guys keep your shoulder rest sometimes. I highly recommend that you do not pack those in with your instrument case because those are potentially little projectiles that can wreak havoc on your instrument. So if at all possible, put that in your purse if you have a purse. Carry-on bag if you're a fella. Um, you know, you want to keep it close to you so that you always have access to it, but I wouldn't leave it in your case. Could you tape it shut? You could tape it. You could tape it shut, um, but I'm, I'm definitely for the fewer things in the case to cause an issue, the better, unless it's soft and cushy like socks. So for example, right here we've got a beautiful cello belt. Oh no, this isn't a belt. This is your strap. Strap, yeah. Definitely, no straps. If you guys have straps on your instruments, and it's going under the plane especially, take those off, because that's just something that can get caught very easily on some of the mechanical things that they use. Sometimes. They're sending it up a huge conveyor belt. Um, we won't get into all that stuff. <laughs> or it can get caught you know, on a piece from the tram that they're taking the instruments over to the plane or away from the plane. With. So take the straps off, OK? If you're putting it on, in the overhead compartment, your violin viola, that's a different story. It's almost like carrying your purse. Well, fellas, you don't know what that's like. But you're going to keep that pretty close. It's with you. You're tucking away in the overhead. But for all the instruments going underneath, primarily the cellist, we don't want any strappage. Even if you have a, I don't know, do you have the holster with that too? You know, backpack thing? No. no. Does anyone have a backpack holster on the back of their cello? OK, good. Because if you do, take it off. <laughs> Put it in something, bring it with you, but take it off of the case. Anything that protrudes, other than you know a luggage tag or your identification, <coughs> and the stuff that's obviously hard attached, we want to remove so that we don't run into any issues that nobody sees until they open up their case. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other cautionary tales, because I don't want to scare anybody. I've never had a problem with my cello once, ever. And I first took it to Europe with, because I, like I mentioned before, I'm old. Cases were completely different <laughs> when I was a kid. I had a flight case that was made of steel and plywood. Ooh. It was the heaviest, back-breaking thing. I still have it, because no one would buy it. Okay? <laughs> but I refused to get rid of it for posterity. That thing, you could shoot that thing, and nothing was going to happen. Yeah. Okay? But we paid for it, because it was back-breaking. Nowadays, the travel cases for violins, violas, and cellos are much less expensive. They still have some that are ridiculous. I looked at a beautiful case just last week. Carbon fiber flight case, dual tone, you know, in-stitching. Oh, it was fabulous. It was about $5,000. Oh. Now, I'd rather put $5,000 into a really great bow than into a really great case. That's why I recommend using the hard cases 
and you know, hacking it the way I was talking about. It saves you a lot of money. It's going to be just as protective, okay? But we want to emulate some of those protections that those cases offer. And it's really about the insulation and keeping it from impact. That's really the main point. So, just to recap, one more time, socks, underwear, and t-shirts are our friend. That's what we're going to use to make sure that we take all the open spaces and secure those with either foam or the clothes. Pillowcases, definitely. Highly recommend it. Does not have to be Egyptian cotton 300 count thread. Okay, it can be very inexpensive um, as long as it's soft. I recommend white if you can do it because, you know, you're not going to get any dyes or colors bleeding onto your instrument. Um, make sure you get two if you have a big instrument. One if you're a violin or viola, that should do it. Um, and securing the bridge, loosening the strings at least two whole steps so that you have a little give with that crazy unpressurized thing going on in the plane. And definitely right under here, lots of support for all the instruments. Okay? Even though we beat these things up with our hands shifting, you know, pressing down hard, we don't want anything else to. Okay? So these pieces of foam, you cut them so they're a little smaller than the space you're trying to fill. Because you don't want a lot of pressure. You don't want to shove anything. Gentle cushion. That's what we're looking for. So I recommend about a half inch to an inch smaller than the space you're trying to fill when you cut the foam. Okay? And if you can do it, combine it. Use foam for some parts, underwear for another. Whatever is comfortable for you. Okay? So really that's that's the main point for packing your instrument. Another thing that you want to do when you arrive, and I always recommend this because you know our instruments are so sensitive to temperature and weather and air conditions. Not this guy. He's cool. He doesn't <laughs> have any kind of effect other than the bridge and the sound post. Open your case when you get to where you're standing. Give your instrument a chance to adjust to its new surroundings. <clears throat> You know, when I travel, I like to uh, take a nap like where I'm going. <laughs> it wasn't always that way, but that's how it is these days. It's almost like your instrument needs that chance to acclimate itself to its new surroundings. So just opening the case and letting it sit, not even playing it, giving it a chance to breathe like a fine wine, take in the new humidity. You know, if the, you're going to Italy, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, humidity. Um, heat, all that stuff, you know, give your instrument a chance. So at least a couple hours with your instrument open before you, you know, close the case or start playing, if you can do it. Sometimes I know you get there and you have to rehearse right away. But if you can, let your instrument breathe. It's been through a lot. It can be traumatic for these guys. So we want to give them a chance to just, ah, <laughs> Okay? So that's always a really good idea. If you have a super rainy day while you're away, I know you don't think about this much um, when you're home, but again, weather conditions are different in different places in the world. Close your case. And I say that because when it's super rainy and humid in the summertime, it can cause seam openings, warping, all those fun things if you don't have like a dehumidifier or something like that in your case. It's not gonna ruin your instrument, but it's just a little precaution to keep it from taking on too much moisture, okay? And, you know, again, carbon fiber is not a concern. Wooden guys, big concern. One thing you might want to do, I don't know, how long do you have before you leave? You have a couple weeks before you go? About two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. One of the things you may want to do is take your instrument to your friendly luthier, whoever it is you go to, just have them give it a look over to make sure there's no impending seam openings, um, no crazy bubbles or warps any place that they see. If it's someone that you've used frequently, they're probably not gonna charge you just to look at your instrument. But if they find something, they can quickly take care of that. Closing a seam or you know an impending seam split, really, unless they're super busy, is an overnight thing. So you have time, and they have time, to address that if that's an issue for your instrument, but I highly recommend that. It's like before you go on a road trip, you gotta check the oil. You gotta make sure there's gas in the engine. You, know, you wanna make sure those brakes work. 
and a myriad of other things. So, you know, we want to do the same for our instruments as well. If your bows aren't tightening like you would like, but they're still tightening, but they're not giving you the tension you really like when you're putting your best effort forward to play, get either a re-hair or have them clip your hairs and restring. Sometimes they'll shampoo it, give it a haircut, much like I need right now, and <laughs> that will preserve the tension. Because sometimes traveling, because you're in a different pressurized situation, being on a plane, it can stretch your bow hairs. And if it's already on the decline as far as tension is concerned, it'll shoot your tension and you don't have sound. So I would recommend having the luthier look at your bow, see if it needs to be trimmed, see if it needs a rehair. Um, you want around 180 hairs. Now, don't go home and count them all, but you know, you want a hefty amount of hair in your bow with good tension. Um, the more humid, the less tension your bow is going to give you because it's horse hair, which reacts to its elements. Have them look for seam openings, any seam splits, any bubbles, anything that could present a problem traveling or allowing you to express yourselves the best to your ability while you're away. And it doesn't take long, just call them, whoever it is, and ask them to do that. And if there is an issue, they can take care of it pretty lickety split, and you still have time. You have the two weeks. That's highly recommended. If you can afford to do this, bring an extra set of strings for yourself. Funky things happen. You could have just put on a brand new set of strings and something happens where, oh, that string popped and I don't know why. Well, it was under a plane. You know, and then you're there and you don't know where you can go to buy more strings. Who's got a good deal? You don't have that kind of time. It creates a lot of stress and tension if that were to happen. So I do recommend, even if it's an old set of strings that you mm -hmm. keep in case something goes, bring it with you. But don't pack it in your case. Bring it in, you know, a little carry-on bag or a pocketbook or something, but bring an extra pair of strings, most definitely. Another thing, um, make sure you have a cloth, a soft cloth to clean your instrument. Depending on where you're going to be, you're looking at um, a lot of rosin getting stuck to the instrument. Because it may be very humid, you want to be able to clean that off daily, okay? And before you go to bed, you know how you wash your face, you brush your teeth, God willing, <laughs> I don't see any green smiles, so I'm assuming you guys do that. Do the same thing to your instrument. Give it a quick wipe, either with a soft instrument cloth, which you can get for a few dollars, or an old washcloth works like a charm, as long as it's clean. <laughs> you just want to wipe your instrument down. If you're near uh, seawater, we don't see it, but there's all kinds of salt and sand in the air. They're small particles, but they're there. So we want to make sure that we clean that off of our instrument. Little things that you don't necessarily think of on a daily basis, uh, living in the great Northeast, okay? So I do recommend that you make sure that you have a soft cloth to wipe your instrument down with, okay? To get that rosin residue and anything else off. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any more great tips. Well, it's summertime, you're not gonna need to damp it. Um, <laughs> that's not a concern. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. We want to tune up the instrument in the bow. We want to get rid of any extra stuff hanging out in the case and secure it well and keep it clean. So, does anybody have any questions? Um, is there a specific kind of label they should have on both the inside or the outside, like their ID tag or whatever? Something? Yes. What do you use? Fragile. Definitely a fragile sticker on the outside. And typically airlines will, will put that on. Um, but I wouldn't think it would be a bad idea if you have a little name tag, you know, the kind of little luggage tag and stuff, put that on your instrument. You don't know who else is traveling at the same time you are or if it's going on the same plane you are. So you want to make sure that it's very clearly marked with your information on it and a nice fragile sticker on the opposite side. And luggage tags are pretty cheap. You, know, you can get those pretty much anywhere, but it's a good investment. Because that has happened, where sometimes you arrive and your, your stuff ends up arriving hours later. So we don't want any mix-ups or confusion or, hey, they were with that trip. Well, that, that school had a trip too. Who's is who's? Okay? So, I mean, we tend to think that we're the only folks that are going to go over there and play. But in reality, there are other people, professionals, other music uh, organizations. So we want to make sure that yours is yours. 
Anybody else have any questions? If you have a BAM case, are you perfectly fine? Is it a BAM travel case? Yeah. You should be fine. But I still recommend loosening the strings two steps because even in the great case, the pressure's still on. Okay, so loosen the strings and do yourself a favor, secure under here and here. You don't oh, need yeah, to worry about the sides. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. So, is it perfect for the violin? It's fine. Yeah. Violin has got good. <laughs> is a loosening string thing only for cellos? No. Oh. If you're going on the cabin, you don't have to worry so much because that is pressurized for human uh, comfort. So it's not really going to mess your strings up. It's really, the loosening the strings is for your instruments going under. And all of you guys playing violin and viola are bringing them on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't have to worry about loosening the strings. Well, I would uh, take it to your local fix-it guy and have him take a look. There are some synthetics that look like ivory, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, some of the TSA guys don't know, like we don't know, you know. So um, I would definitely, you know, have him take a look. If it looks a lot like ivory but is not ivory, you might be able to get that luthier to write a little, you know, note, sign it, and date it, proving that, hey, this is an ivory, don't take my vote. That was my question, how to prove it to them that it's not. Yeah. Well, it's tough to go back and get a letter from who you purchased the bow from, especially if you've had it for a while. Like, I've had one of my bows I have literally had for, oh my gosh, 35 years? Oh, wow. Yeah, one of them that I refuse to get rid of. It's sitting there with my travel cases made out of plywood and steel. But I refuse <laughs> to get rid of it. I would not be able to go back and get paperwork on that phone. But what I could do is take it to my fix-it guy and have him write a note that certifies that this is not ivory, have him sign it, put their business name, blah, 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 stamp, whatever it is they do. Okay, it's a safe idea. Um, my daughter Jackie has a viola, so I just wanted to double check. On the top part there, does she need to put the foam in there too, or just? If she's taking it on the plane, it should be okay. okay. It, it never hurts. For a little extra security, I mean, your BAM case, you're you're fine. For just a hard case for the smaller instruments, even though they're going on with you, I would put a little extra under the headstock and under here around the bridge, and just you know, in case the plane jostles, you know. And you said don't put the foam directly on the varnish because the wouldn't. petroleum will get in there. It All right. could. So put a pillowcase or something. All right. Yes, I mean it's it's very unlikely. It would get so hot that that would happen. But you don't want to take the risk, especially because, you know, finishes are important for our instruments. Um, varnish is important for our instruments. We don't want to just slap on some, you know, car paint and call it a day. We, you know, it's a very specialized thing. So that's the best protection. Make sure that it's not directly in contact with the instrument's varnish. Anybody else have a question? What about temperature in, like, the cabin? In the past, when I've gone traveling, it's been really cold in the upper part. Like, we're yeah. really hot. It's one or the other. Like, the lights make it hot in the bottom, or yes. should we layer instruments flat down? Or Definitely. Layer instruments flat. And the reason I say that, sometimes planes, you know, they hit a little turbulence, they do this, they do that. If you have it on its side, it's more likely mm. that it's going to fall. And that's an impact. It's much safer, even with those heat variables, to lay it flat on its back in its hard case. It's going to be safer. Um, but you're absolutely right, there is temperature fluctuation, but it's nothing that's so uncomfortable for us that it would be uncomfortable for our instrument. That's really our, our rule of thumb. <coughs> if it's uncomfortable for us, it's going to be uncomfortable for the instrument. Okay? Yes, I like to sleep on my side, but if I was going to sleep someplace where I'm in cargo, I'd sleep on my back. Same thing. <laughs> okay? Do you have a question? No? Comment? <laughs> Thank you. Any other? Oh, here's one. Oh, yeah. Um, so, if we're looking at getting the um, bow here to be shrink, how loose should we keep the bow when we're packing? Um, loose. Not to the point where it's floppy. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to use your bow as an example. Actually, this is um, Like this. When you tighten it, remember, it doesn't have to be straight. We don't want the stick straight. Um, we don't want two inches between the stick and the hair. You guys are all players, you know. Um, but if typically this is as, as much tension as you can get and that's comfortable, expect that if it's really warm and humid, which is possible, you're probably going to get more 
like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you are traveling with it, make sure that your hair is very loose. Not that it's flapping in the breeze like this, but pretty much just like you had it. Okay. So it's not laying on the stick, but it's pretty darn close. Okay. We don't want the opposite too, where it's super cold under the plane, and all of a sudden it goes snap because it's you know tightened. That's an issue. Make sure it's loose, but not too loose. Okay. And it's going to go from you know cold up in the air to the temperature that's coming into when you arrive. So that can have an effect as well. So make sure that it stays about like this, okay? So that you can see a little bit, but not a pinky's point. And that's one too. And it matches. He's all 